Aumani kizukubaiwa. Icha sika nguwe hudikana asu na kubaiwa. Uwa ni basa. Kana asu na kubaiwa. Ukwini zupu kwa basa. Saka oto wana kutuwa itasei. It is an honor and privilege to address you at this momentous occasion in the history of this region. The commissioning of the Ebbing Forest Water Supply Project and the groundbreaking ceremony for the Gwai Shangani Pipeline is a remarkable milestone in our quest to improve water security and supply to the city of Bulawayo and surrounding areas. The Epping Forest Water Supply Project in particular is a culmination of hard work and indeed close collaboration between my government departments, inclusive of Zimbabwe National Water Authority Zinwa and the city of Lawai. This event attests to the power of a shared vision, cooperation, coordination, unity of purpose and hard work. These values must continue to be entrenched as we all work together towards the attainment of Vision 2030. As already stated by my Minister of Finance, that you here in Matebele North Province, your capital income is already about 1,500 US dollars. You still need to work hard, Richard Moore, to reach 3,000 per capita to attain uh, middle income status by 2030. I'm told by Nguyen that Bulawa is already at 3,000, above 3,000. You need a, a little push to, to reach 3,500 US dollars per capita. Ladies and gentlemen, earlier this morning, I had the privilege to perform the groundbreaking of the Gwai Shangani Bulawayo Water Pipeline Project. This marks the much awaited commencement of the National Mateveleland Zambezi Water Pipeline Project. The Zambezi water project was identified way back in 1912 as a long-term solution to the water challenges faced in Matebele North, Matebele South, and the Ulawa provinces. This project, the Zambezi water pipeline project, will not serve Mat North, Vlawa, and Mat South Province alone. It will go beyond those three provinces. Let me assure you that this Zambezi Water Project, Zambezi Water Pipeline Project, will become a reality during my administration.
As you may recall, the National Matebele and Zambezi Water Project involves various phases. These include the construction of the Guai Shangani Dam, the construction of a pipeline from the dam to Bulawayo City, and uh, finally, the construction of another pipeline which will draw water from the Zambezi. We are already 40% in the construction of the Waishangani Dam, and we have begun the trenching of the pipeline to Ulawayo from Kwaishangani Dam. The completion of these independent but interlinked projects will ultimately spur economic production, productivity, and growth, as well as permanently resolving water challenges often experienced in the region. The first stage of the project, which is the construction of Gwai Shangani Dam, is already underway and on course with a total of 4.5 billion Zimbabwe dollars allocated for the project in the current financial budget. The dam will be completed by December this year. <laughs> Furthermore, government also allocated 535 million Zimbabwe dollars towards the commencement of works on the 245 kilometer long Gwai Shangani to Bulawayo pipeline, whose completion is expected by December 2022, next year. <laughs> These project timelines are expected to coincide with the Gwai Shangani Dam receiving substantial water inflow for conveyance to Bulawayo province. On completion, the pipeline will have the capacity to convey in excess of 160 megaliters of water to Bulawayo annually, a development that will improve the water and the sanitation requirements of that city, but actually in excess of what they need. In keeping with my administration's results-oriented culture and a pledge to modernize and develop national infrastructure through our own means, the project will be undertaken by various local contractors for the different sections of the pipeline to cut down the period of construction as what we are doing now in the reconstruction and dualization and widening of the road from Bind Bridge to Harare, given allocation of pieces of the length of the pipeline. This will not only speed up completion of the civil works, but equally provide employment and empowerment for contractors and communities along the construction route. As I was doing groundbreaking this morning, I asked the Minister of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water, and the Rural Resettlement, and said the Pipes, I, the pipe I saw in the trench 
Where has it been produced? We called in an engineer from a company producing those pipes. In the past, we used to import those water pipes, one and a half meters diameter. But we are now producing them ourselves because we say innovation, innovation, invention, invention. It is necessary that we allow the talent in our girls and boys at institutions of higher learning to be supported through innovation hubs at these institutions and industrial parks which you have built at these universities to produce goods and services. Time is gone, is past, where our institutions produces products from these institutions, products who are oriented to seek employment. Now, we must produce products from these institutions who, when they leave the institutions, produce goods and services and not seek employment. Distinguished guests, agriculture remains the bedrock of our economy. Hence, strategic policies continue to be rolled out to ensure greater production, productivity, and profitability in the sector. To you young people, the youths, the girls and boys, stop shouting in streets, make money by producing goods and services. To this end, plans for an irrigation scheme covering over 10,000 hectares in the vicinity of the dam are in place. In addition, a large volume of water from the project will propel irrigation activities along the pipeline route in the parts of Lupane, Cholocho, and Umguza districts. Matevela and North Province will therefore become food secure in its own right and an exporter of surplus significant produce, surplus agricultural produce, as well as play host to viable rural industry systems. The idea of turning this region into a green belt is not only logical, but compelling and is realistic. This strategic project will thus have a far-reaching impact towards accelerating agriculture, production, productivity, and growth in this part of the country. The quality of livelihoods of our people will inevitably change and broaden their economic empowerment activities. This resonates with my administration's commitment to equalization principles under the devolution and decentralization agenda. Last financial year, Undota Umube gave only three billion to devolution. This time around, he has given 20 billion to devolution. 
And at the end of the year, I will ask Minister July Moyo to say which rural district can, can, uh, council which has not bought its own grade. If there is one, we fire them all and create a new one. And therefore, challenge communities to maintain the momentum and unity of purpose, which has resulted in the development milestones we are recording across the country. No one and no place in our country should be left behind. There are no spectators in the projects which my government continues to roll out. Our people must be organized as both participants and beneficiaries. I was so pleased we passed through a community ball where the Minister of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Resettlement set up a community ball where the village women collect water, can have gardens and a place for washing their clothes. That's what we want. <laughs> Communities must also ensure the sustainability of these projects by increasing their awareness and the fight against the theft and the vandalism of national public infrastructure. In this instance, the protection of the water-related ecosystem and aquifers are of paramount importance and dovetails with our country's obligation under the global framework on the international decade of action water for sustain, uh, sustainable development. Distinguished guests, comrades and friends, access to clean, safe and portable water for all citizens remains a top priority of the Second Republic. The Epping Forest of Lawayo Water Augmentation Project, funded by government, so the rehabilitation of existing bowls and the drilling and equipping of 10 more bowls under the project. This timely intervention will deliver a daily average of 10 million liters of water to Blauwe City. The Epping Forest project followed the successful completion of a similar project carried out by government at Rochester in May 2020, which also resulted in the delivery of 10 million liters. I put up a committee, which Julaima was talking about. And they said, you ministers, go to Bulawa, don't come back until you come and report a solution. <laughs> and I think they were here nearly two weeks. And when they came back, they reported the solution, and they were got 10 million uh, megawatts, 10 megawatts. So there's this edition now. And I don't know what to do if I want results. <laughs> With this additional supply, Ulawa is set to receive a combined 20 million liters of water from these underground water sources daily. In addition, a community board has been set aside specifically for the families in the area. I was discussing with the women there. They were so happy. They are going to utilize the water. There's also a facility for uh, cattle to be watered. So the Epping Forest and the Rochester project remain part of the short-term interventions by government to ensure that there is clean and affordable portable water in the city of Bulawayo. We are equally glad that the Mchavez project played a very important role towards providing water to the city of Bulawayo, most importantly during this difficult COVID-19 uh, period. The mayor of Bulawayo, I understand you are here. 
the town clerk, if you are here, the engineers from Lawa, if you are here. Next time I come, you must be able to tell me you've corrected the facilities at the other three dams which were mentioned. Masambasia. As we move towards the attainment of Vision 2030, it is my administration's aspiration to have a long term and sustainable solution to the city of Flowers perennial water challenges. Reliable water supplies and other enablers must position the city as an, ultra, as an attractive investment destination and the country's industrial hub, which it was. These projects are being financed through internally generated resources, which is a demonstration of my government's resolve to find local sustainable funding solutions to meet our local needs and infrastructure gaps rather than crying because of sanctions. In the past two years, investments have been made for the construction of multi-purpose dams that will provide water for irrigation, urban and rural water supplies, manufacturing and mining sectors. In 2021 alone, we have provided over 10 billion to ensure that Tuli, Manyange, Vungu, Sema, Chivu, Silver Stream, Zimunya, Bindura, Dande, and the Kunzi dams are completed. My government has also allocated substantial financial resources towards the rehabilitation of Colinborn, Inyati, Dete, Mberengwa, Gokwe, Zaka, Hauna, Nyanga, Nyabira, and the Tema water treatment plants. Meanwhile, the expansion of Zinoa's mandate to include the development of infield irrigation in addition to the development of water infrastructure to the field edge will advance our broader strategic focus in this sector. This includes a more rapid, robust, and reliable dam infrastructure development and the water conveyance and the utilization systems across the country. I urge our women and our youth to grab the vast opportunities which spill off from these projects by creating businesses in horticulture exports, fisheries, ecotourism, and others along the entire agricultural value chain. The ongoing achievements made by the Second Republic in Water and the Road Infrastructure Development from internally mobilized resources has boosted our confidence in the use of local resources and our own talented and competent human capital to achieve national development priorities as we see them fit. This development and empowerment model will now transcend to other sectors of our economy. Finally, I applaud the work of all stakeholders including government departments, resident associations, local authorities, and traditional leaders, is Ndunazet, which saw the successful completion of this project. Over the years, the region has repeatedly called for the Zambezi water project, but the Second Republic, as a listening government, has heard you 
and is now delivering. This culture of listening, this culture of dialogue, this culture of unity, and this culture of collaboration is encouraged going forward by all communities. First and foremost, we are all Zimbabweans. Together, we are achieving more for the good of our people and our beloved Zimbabwe. But before I conclude, allow me to yet again urge us all to remain vigilant to the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. It is pleasing that our prevention measures are showing good results, but we must never relax. Last week saw the rollout of the first phase of our national COVID-19 vaccination program, which targets frontline workers. What's going on here? Social media was saying that uh, the leadership will not be vaccinated. On that particular day, we had various engagements. So I phoned uh, my minister and the vice president to get the first jab. The vaccine is safe. Daddy Goody, Michon, if vaccine is right, it's right. The vice president of the party, vice president of the republic, had the first job. He's still here. <laughs> my cabinet and myself, in two weeks, when the next, okay, in two weeks, when the next consignment comes, I'll be vaccinated. You will be vaccinated and other cabinet ministers. When I move on. <laughs> I assure the nation that more vaccines are coming and the people will have the chance to be vaccinated. Just yesterday at half past three, I got communication from His Excellency President Xi Jinping through his ambassador that because we have received the first one and thank the people of China, the government of China, the Communist Party of China, yesterday they donated another 200,000 doses yesterday. <laughs> and the Minister of Health, supported by Unmube, they also bought two sets yesterday. 600,000 doses, which will come during the first two weeks of March, and another 1.2 million doses. There are so many companies which have come forward who want to import the vaccines and sell them. We have said no. If any company buys vaccines, that vaccine must be distributed freely. I would like to express profound gratitude of, of the government of Zimbabwe, the partisan PF, to the president and people of China for their kind generosity. In addition to the donation, Sinopharm has also availed an additional 1,2 doses of vaccines for purchase by our government Procurement plans of other vaccines from India and Russia are also advanced. The arrangements are now advanced. Meanwhile, let us mask up. 
and continue to adhere to the laid down health protocols. It is now my pleasure and honor to declare the Bulawa your water supply augmentation from Epping Forest officially commissioned. God bless you all. God bless Zimbabwe. I thank you. Yeah. <laughs>